In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made a three-dimensional outdoor bench for a repeat client. This was a super fun project and I had a blast. I was cleaning up my workshop and I got a phone call. It was from a repeat client, so of course I took the call immediately. She had asked me for a really cool outdoor bench and said I could do any style that I wanted to, as long as I made it awesome and I fit within her dimensions. I'm pretty sure that's the phone call of my dreams. When you're a woodworker and you're in your workshop and a repeat customer calls you up and lets you pick any style that you want, well, let's just say you jump all over that order. So I picked the design I wanted. I sent her a simple sketch real quick just to get her final approval because after all, she is the one paying for it, right? And she went with it. She loved the style and the look and it fit within her dimensions for her outdoor porch. Um, so I just ran with it. But to be honest with you, as much as I enjoyed this project, I undercharged. Now that's the problem with something like this. I didn't really know what was going to go into it. All I could do is estimate it at best. And I guess I took the style and the design a little too far and I messed up and didn't charge enough. But I still had a blast. And since making this bench, I've had several other clients see the pictures and the videos on Instagram and order it. And this time I was able to charge more. I typically build large scale furniture pieces, so everything begins with a glue up. And I had to do a lot of glue ups to get all these components. And I had to make a template. I came up with a template using quarter inch ply and I made it into this. Pretty cool, right? Now the concept behind this was difficult because I had to figure out a way to carve this X three dimensionally with the tools that I had. Now I did have a 17 inch bandsaw which helped me out greatly, but that's the throat on the bandsaw, not the height. The height is only 12 inches and you can see here that this is almost two feet of height. So I had to do this in two different components and then glue it together using dominoes or dowels, whatever you want. But I use dominoes because that's what I have. Now if you don't have a bandsaw, you can still do this in another way with a jigsaw, but then it's four components instead of two, and it was a little too complex to show you. Uh, maybe I'll do that in a future video. But don't get bummed out. When I first started out, I didn't have a bandsaw. All I had was a jigsaw. And it took me a while of building furniture pieces and saving up money just so I could purchase a bandsaw. But when you can get to that point, definitely do so. A bandsaw is a game changer. It completely changed the game in my woodworking and my business for what I was able to make and efficiently on top of that. Speaking of tools, I've got quite a bit, but I started this business seven years ago. I was bankrupt, food deprived, and nearly homeless. I literally had no money to my name and I make a joke of it all the time. What I actually had was some change in my pocket and that was my entire net worth. So if you don't have all the tools that you need, don't fret, you will get there, but you're gonna have to come up with a plan. You're gonna have to keep building with tools that you have and saving a little bit of money until you can get those items that you need. That's exactly how I did it. And seven years later, I pretty much have everything I need that's essential to furniture making. And I started bankrupt, so I know if I can do it, you can do it. These components were kinda rough. Obviously they had a ton of bandsaw marks on them, so I put on some sandpaper grits ranging from 80 all the way up to 120, and I just stepped it up until I got it nice and smooth. Once I got it contoured and shaped exactly how I liked, I then dominoed it and glued them together. That was the trick to making this three-dimensional X component, gluing up two pieces together to make one large three-dimensional X, as you can see here.
Once I had the three dimensional X's done, it was time to move on to the easy parts of the bench, which are the legs, the armrest, and you know, the supports for the seating situation. Super easy, not that big a deal. It's also pretty straightforward. The only bummer was the scale of the bench took a bunch of glue up. So I had to laminate a bunch of two by eights out of juniper to match the beefiness of the X's that I had previously made. I make templates for almost everything I do. Every furniture build, every furniture component, and I hang them up in my shop. It's pretty great. It looks good in the shop for atmosphere purposes because it's kind of like eye candy for when a client comes in. It just puts them in the right setting. Uh, but the reason behind it is to make sure each cut and each piece is repeatable. So if a client ever ordered that piece again, which they have, then I'm able to duplicate that bench. Once the leg profiles were cut out, it was time to sand. And once again, like my process, I start with 80 grit and I step it up to 120. It's pretty easy and you don't have any more marks or uh, gouges in it. It's a, it's a pretty clean process. But here's how the side profile of the bench is gonna look. A back, an armrest, and one leg. I started putting the frame together. At this point, I was getting a little bit confused because you can see on the other side of the shop, I was also multitasking a king size bed frame and I had those numbers rattling around in my head. So I tried to attach all these with dowels or dominoes and I got myself confused and messed up some cuts and ended up reverting back to my basic skills, which were pocket holes and lag screws. It worked great. And to go ahead and let you know, this bench now has been built for over a year and it hasn't came apart. It's held up really well. I used Type Bond 3 glue, which is water resistant. And of course, I sealed it for outdoor purposes. Now it's time to work on the seating. I made a few reference marks and a few reference cuts. Now don't let that video fool you. I actually went back and forth with that seating situation for probably an hour and a half. It took me much longer than anticipated. And I attached it with Z-clips. Z-clips are a fastener that I use quite frequently, especially with tabletops or solid wood components, because it helps allow uh, movement of the wood for seasonal expansion. So I highly recommend that. I'm really digging this build. Like I said, it's my most favorite build I've ever done. And look at it, it's coming out really cool. Now, I didn't think it through when it was time to do the armrest, so it was a little tricky trying to figure out how I was gonna attach it. And I literally attached it with lag bolts from the rear, and I had to undo the seat so I could lag bolt it from underneath as well. And then I installed the seat back on. It was kind of tricky, but it's very supportive and it's very strong, and this thing is going nowhere. Now the tricky part of this bench was how I assembled it. I did everything on top of my workshop table, not thinking it through on the weight. So by the time I was done building this thing on the workshop table, it almost killed me to get it off. Total mistake. At some point I should have shifted this thing to the floor and continued. But like I said, I didn't think it through. But it looks good, it's super sturdy and super strong and now it's time to move on to the finish. The customer had asked for a rustic brown finish with a hint of gray. So I mixed a couple of stains together. Um, I believe I used Minwax, um, Classic Gray, and Weathered Oak, if I remember correctly. I don't remember the mixture percentages, but once I did that, I had the tone that I liked, and then I sprayed it down with an outdoor spar varnish. It worked really well, and I did six coats all the way, top and bottom. And the very last thing I did was I put 1500 grit sandpaper just to go over it to remove any nips and little scratches just to make this thing baby smooth. And then I did one final coat and it came out great. Check this out.
Well, that's it for this video, guys. I had a blast making this bench. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. And I can't wait to see you again next time. Peace.